In this video, we will code a GPT for all voice assistant. The voice assistant can use any language model on GPT for all. It is completely open source. That means free. It will run 100% locally on most modern computers. I'll be running the voice assistant on the cheapest 8GB RAM M1 Mac Mini. So you won't need some crazy custom PC to use it. Before we get into the tutorial, let's see what the voice assistant can do. So I'll start the voice assistant by running this command in the terminal. Now just to show, I am not connected to the internet right now. So this is a completely offline GPT voice assistant. Once it says this, you know the program has started listening for our wake word. Jarvis. Listening. What is a neural network? A neural network is a type of artificial intelligence model that simulates the structure and function of the human brain. It can if you ever want to stop the voice assistant from speaking the full response so you can get onto the next prompt like I'm doing here, you can push Control C. Jarvis. Listening. What is Python? Python is a high-level programming language that was created by Guido Van Rossum in 1991. It is known for its simplicity, readability, and ease of use. To get started, we will install the GPT for All desktop app from the official website. I'll leave the link for that in the description. Next, we will open the app. Inside the app, we can download any of the available language models with one click. I'll use the GPT for All Falcon model today. While code editors are subjective and you can use whichever code editor you prefer, I'll be using VS Code. The voice assistant will be coded in Python. To install Python onto your machine, I recommend using Anaconda. You can install it from the website linked in the description. First, we will install the GPT for All Python library. Next, we will install the Whisper library from OpenAI. Then we can install the Speech Recognition library. And finally, we will install the Play Sound library. In order to run all of the Python libraries that we just installed, we will need to install a couple more dependencies. We will install the Pi Audio Python library, as well as the Sound File library. Then we need to install FFMPEG for our operating system. Run the command from this list for your operating system. Lastly, Mac users will need to install the port audio library using this brew command. Once installed, create a folder called gpt for all underscore voice. Open your code editor, then open the folder we created. Within the folder, we will create a Python file called main.py. Within our main.py file, we can write these lines of code at the very top to import all of the libraries we just installed, as well as some built-in Python libraries needed for our program. Create a variable called wake underscore word. Within a string object, I will specify Jarvis as my wake word. Now we can create a model object where we will load the model into the GPT for all Python API. You'll need to give the file path to the model on your computer. On Mac, it will be located in the same file path, just change your username. On Windows, the file path will look something like this. To verify we are passing the correct path, we can open a new terminal on Mac and Linux or a command prompt on Windows. Use the CD command to change the current directory to the GPT for all folder. If the CD command works, you have the correct folder path. Now use the ls command to show all the files and folders in the gpt for all folder. The model file will be one of the bin files. Now you can paste your folder path and add the model file to the end of it. Create a variable called r where we will initiate the recognizer class from speech recognition. Then create a variable called tiny model to load the whisper tiny model, as well as a base model variable to load the base model. OpenAI Whisper has different size models we can run on our computers. Bigger models provide better performance at the cost of speed. Save and run the script. It will download the tiny and base model to your computer. Now if you don't need your voice assistant to run offline, we can leave the code as is. As the code is, your script will check the OpenAI APIs for changes to the whisper model every time you run the script. This will cause an error message that stops the program from running when we are not connected to the internet. To get around this error, we can load the model files directly without communicating to the OpenAI API. We will use the OS library to load the files into our Python program by providing the file path to the models. On Mac, it will be in this file path. On Windows, the file path should look something like this. Once we have loaded the model file, we can pass that directly to the load model function. Now there are two more files that we will need to make OpenAI Whisper work offline. OpenAI will check for these two files every time we use the transcribe function. I don't know why they thought it was a good idea to program this shit into this library, but we will modify the library to hack around this inconvenience. First cd into the directory where your model files were installed, then run these two commands to download the needed files. Now we can modify the OpenAI Whisper library to load these files directly instead of checking the OpenAI website. The file we need to change is called openai underscore public dot pi. 
it will be inside the tick token underscore ext directory. On Mac, that is going to be at this file path. On Windows, your file path should look like this. Open the OpenAI underscore public Python script. Import OS. Then on line 13 and 14, we will change the strings linking to the OpenAI servers to load our files locally to the script. Now you can save and exit this script. Now that we have modified OpenAI Whisper to run locally on our machine without an internet connection, we will have a similar issue with the GPT for all Python library. We don't need to modify this library, we just need to pass allow underscore download as false when we load the model into our voice assistant. Now we can write the code for text to speech. On Mac, the best method for local text to speech is slightly different than Windows or Linux. Using the SYS library, I will check if the operating system is not equal to Darwin. Darwin is Mac OS. If it is not Mac, we will import PyTTSX3. Non-Mac users will need to install by running this pip command. Initialize PyTTSX3 inside a variable called engine. Define a function called speak that takes a text input. Check if the operating system is Mac. If it is Mac, then we will run these three lines of code to clean the text input and send it in a terminal message to the built-in Mac text-to-speech engine. You may need to pause here to copy that. Write an else statement that will run for Windows and Linux operating systems. Then run the PyTTSX say function as well as the run and wait function. Now define a function called listen for wakeword that takes an audio input. Next, we will use a boolean variable called listening for wakeword. Add that on line 18 and set the variable as true. Inside the listen for wake word function we can declare listening for wake word as a global variable. Now we will create a file called wakedetect.wave, then write the raw audio input to the file. Using the whisper tiny model, we will transcribe the wakedetect.wave file and select the text transcription from our audio input in a variable called text input. If the wake word is in the text input, we will print and speak to the user to notify that our program is listening for a voice prompt. Then change the listening for wake word global variable to false. On line 19, create a variable called source and initialize the microphone class class from the speech recognition library. Define a function called prompt GPT that also takes an audio input. Again, declaring the global listening variable. Start a try statement and create a file called prompt.wave. Then write the raw audio prompt data. Use the base model to transcribe the prompt.wave file. Select the prompt text from the whisper results. If the length of the prompt text is zero characters, we will print and speak letting the user know and set the listening for wake word variable back to true. Else our prompt text is not equal to zero characters. Print the prompt text. In a variable called output, we will call the generate function on our model object, where we will pass the prompt text and specify the token limit for our responses. Now we can print and speak our responses from GPT for all. Next, we can start the process back over again by printing say wake word to wake me up and set listening for wake word back to true. Finally, close out the try statement with an accept statement that will print any error messages encountered if ever any occur while prompting GPT for all. Now our program has text to speech, speech to text, and ability to communicate with GPT for all. We just need two more functions to control the logic of our program. Define a function called callback that takes recognizer and audio as inputs. Declare the global listening variable. If listening for wake word is true, run the listen for wake word function on the audio input. Else, run the prompt GPT function on the audio. Now, define a function called start listening. With sources S, we can run the adjust ambient noise function from speech recognition for two seconds to analyze background noise from our microphone. Then print say wake word. Unlike the previous Python voice assistants on this channel, where we use the listen function from speech recognition. We will use the listen in background function for this program. In the other programs, we had to start up a microphone process for every time the program listened for wake word or prompt inputs. Using the listen in background function, our microphone starts and stays running in a separate process on our CPU while all the other code for the program runs. Now that our microphone is running in a background process, we need to keep the start listening function running. To do so, we will call on the time library's sleep function every one second inside of a while true loop. Now we have all of the Python functions for our voice assistant. We will check if name equals main 
and then run the start listening function. Now our Python voice assistant is completely functional. The only issue with our program in its current state is that every time we call on the OpenAI Whisper models when we're using an M1 or M2 Mac CPU, we'll get a warning message printed to our terminal output. This will make it really hard to read our outputs from GPT for all. To get around this, we will go to line 20 and write this line of code to ignore all of these specific warning messages. Your voice assistant is now complete. To run the program, you can CD into the GPT for all underscore voice folder, then run Python 3 main.py. I just launched the official Discord server for this channel. It is linked in the description if you have any questions about this or any other tutorials on the channel. I'll be checking that daily to respond to as many messages as possible to help you guys with your code. All of the source code for this program will be on my github linked in the description of this video if you'd like to contribute any improvements to the project feel free to open a pull request for anything you think we should add on that github link this has been ai austin i will see you in the next one